Two Broke Rednecks present. It's the new Happy Fun Ball by Hoover. Zoinks! Looks like carpet to me. Tom, these, uh, these are yours? Yeah, they're mine. Oh, Tom, how could you? And on pudding night. Like all too many of his contemporaries, Tom is experimenting with something he knows little about. Being an 18-year-old trapped in a 35-year-old man's body. Marijuana. It's a scene which must have been in countless ways, all equally heartbreaking. But it can be better with interpretive dance. Mom smokes like a chimney. And you have a drink every day and smoke too. It's not the same. Why not? Because I say so. It's easy for you to stand there with a cigarette in one hand and a drink in another and tell us not to blow pot. Have you really considered all the consequences? Such as premature aging? Marijuana is any worse than nicotine or alcohol. You can get cancer. Your liver can rot away. Well, you're right. You rather look down on my generation for getting hung up on smoking and drinking, knowing it's bad for us. You think we're stupid? No, I think you're full of shit. But does that make your generation so all fired smart for getting hung up on grass? You can be what? harmed by that too. You can be in your thirties and still live at home with your parents. You're blowing pot. Pot isn't bad for you. Oh, isn't it? How do you know? My dealer told me. Let's check the script. Concerning marijuana's possibly harmful effects have been made, although they're not yet conclusive. But some facts are known. Some effects have been established. There are apparently few physical manifestations. A reddening of the eyes, lowered body temperature, and a certain inability to coordinate movement. But there are other effects, psychological effects. The marijuana user generally experiences an uncontrollable feeling of hilarity, quite without reason. He exhibits a marked carelessness. His senses and time perception are distorted. He becomes confused, and he displays irresponsibility and poor judgment. And prolonged use may result in a loss of ambitious respect the induced couldn't care less attitude so pot but makes you not give a damn dangerous drug like like heroin you don't become an addict may not be physically addictive but it is habituating it makes people it's bitch what it really does is it is expand your mind it makes you see things more clearly it makes you more creative it makes you believe you're 18 again and, and right as they all say so yeah maybe they do anyway time it is illegal Every time you blow a marijuana cigarette, you take a chance on blowing your future. What future? He's 35 and still at home. They're not criminals. Only because they haven't been caught yet. Oh, burn! Opinions. But the relationship between Tom and his father is basically a good one. Tom's father believes in his son, and he challenges him, find out the actual facts about smoking grass. And while he's at it, to move out of the house. Fair and square. Don't hear only what you want to hear. And then if Tom is still honestly convinced there's no harm in doing it, nothing further will be said. Except by Mom, but only on Pudding Night. He smoke pot occasionally for a few weeks. He's really new to the scene. Dear narrator, stop trying to seem hip. Oh, Pop, come on. Establishment propaganda. Read it anyway. Does it have pictures of topless native girls? But I've got a better source of information. Tom seeks the help of his friend, Mac, a couple of years his senior. So I'd make Mac about 40. Mac thinks Tom's project is real square, but he agrees to get him all the dope. No pun intended. <laughs> he knows just where to start Tom's education. At a garden pot party held by one of Mac's friends. So they're having a party to celebrate the fern pot? ...and doesn't harm anybody, he's told. It's a groovy way of relaxing, opening your senses. Tom is most interested in what he sees. These people, most of them college students, are bright and well-adjusted, very sure of themselves and their ability to handle anything. Obviously, they are all able to blow pot occasionally without ill effects. Well, 
almost all of them. The rest gain mutant powers. Pot doesn't have the toxic effects of cigarettes, he's told. It's Spike Lee, Jeff Bridges. Behavior that alcohol does. The ability to coordinate movement. The negative effects of smoking grass are exaggerated. All it is is a neat way to dispel the problems of the day for a little while. Tom is wondering if any of these women are high enough to sleep with him. Uncontrollable hilarity without reason. Mac has managed to get himself stoned. He has a great idea. He'll take Tom to see someone who can give him the real lowdown. A true expert on the grass scene. The weed guru! We now return to Sunset Strip, already in progress. It's the Happy Mobile! Stop signs are for losers. Irresponsibility and poor judgment. Where's your head? Quit buggy. That sign turned green. Dad, the film dropped acid. Mac takes Tom to a psychedelic shop, a head shop. The place is something else, out of sight. A pot smoker's supermarket, a psychedelic attestant. The stuff of Tommy Chow's dreams. Named Harry. That is name or description. Harry is a real veteran of the grass scene, and he gives Tom the word. He's very persuasive. Everyone, but everyone's on grass. All the big ones, of course. The best writers, the best musicians, the best... Want to see the crap I can't sell? Why can't anyone figure out I'm 35 years old? Tom is impressed with the imaginative, creative posters displayed on the wall. Tom is easy to impress. And he asks Harry about the artist. Oh, that guy's on acid. But it's Mac again who has the answer. He knows the artist. Man, he painted those posters a couple of years ago. His pad's nearby. Why not go over and meet him? Why not, indeed? Thank you. Come again. Hey, man. Got any spare change? Sure. Here. Lots of Keeps having flashbacks of his dad. Waco, the artist, is pleased and... Hey, it's Shaggy! ...lights up a joint in honor of his visitors. Sure, he blows pot. Has been for years. It's great, man. Enhances the senses. Opens your mind. Stimulates real creativity. Those conventional posters of the old days were just so much junk, Waco tells them. His real inspirations come to him now when he's stoned on grass. This new work, now that's out of sight. Looks like it's in plain view to me. Wonder if he'll get mad if I ask him what the hell these are. They only think they create better things. Waco insists grass is the greatest. That's where real expansion of your mind and talents can be found. Turn on, tune out of the rat race and its square problems, and tune in on real self knowledge and creative power. Waco, Waco, I'm hit. She has reverb. Bunny is Waco's wife. There's trouble, big trouble. Hey, it's my cousin! Your younger brother. It's grass, all right. Bunny's brother, Jim, had been observed getting it. Yeah, I want to make out. The officers caught up with him and placed him under arrest. It's still illegal. Take a chance of blowing your whole future. Bunny wants to know what the officers are going to do with their brother. They tell her they're going to take him downtown and beat him with a rubber hose. The gym and the evidence found will be taken to the police station. She can get all further information there. 
Tom is impressed with the calm efficiency of the officers and the compassion they show for Bunny. They never lose their cool. Even in the face of verbal abuse... And visual abuse with those pants. Bunny and Waco want to go to the police station. And Mac and Tom decide to tag along. Because they heard the police were giving out free samples. At the police station, while Waco's talking to the desk sergeant, Bunny's worrying about her brother. She figures he's somebody's prison bitch by now. He knew he was taking a chance on that pickup, she says, but he just had to have his grass. Not physically addictive, but habituating. Dad told me it'd make me his bitch. Tom wants to think, so many thoughts are crowding his mind. Like the fact people are running to his whole I'm 18 act. Marijuana, cannabis sativa, or Indian hemp, weed, grass, pot. It can become a stimulant or a depressive or an hallucinatory agent. And you can only read about it, asshole. And that sign's talking about women. Hey! User, occasionally with disastrous results. Tom has company. A police officer has noticed his interest in the display. Does he have any questions? Are you well, giving away free samples? Information, pro and con. What are the facts, he asks. Easily, with friendly informality, the officer speaks to Tom. No lecturing, no sermonizing. Pot smoking, quite apart from being illegal, is a problem. The psychological dependency generated by pot is probably its greatest danger. And the fact it makes 35-year-olds think they're 18. You can't cope with the everyday problems of growing up, seeking ersatz maturity through it. Kids who get high repeatedly don't want to come down. Because coming down sucks. But of goals and ambitions. They've found a world where they seemingly have no problems. And if you come in here, you can mark out your friends. Smoking marijuana all too often leads to the use of more dangerous stuff. Take it from one who runs into the young victims of just that every day. Users tend to stick with other users. Crap, they're out of narcotics. They get them on harder stuff. Every user is a potential dealer. Some 95% of all heroin addicts started with pot. Not every pot smoker goes on to heroin, of course. A personality factor is undoubtedly largely responsible for that step. Like being a 35-year-old teenager. Factor ...which turned the user on to pot. Yes. Organized crime is involved in pushing marijuana. After all, it may well be a first step to real addiction. So you can get addicted to crime? And every pot smoker indirectly supports big-time narcotics dealers and criminals. These dealers sometimes even get cute. They and wear kinky lingerie. In the grass, ...hoping for a quick and dependable push towards addiction. Not to mention all the other junk and impurities mixed in with the average cut of marijuana. Maybe smoking pot. Want to see photos of me naked? The young occasional user, although this is far from certain. As recently as 1914, heroin was sold over the counter as the little old ladies who wanted to get out. Properties were not fully known, but consider this: both alcohol used in excess and marijuana are equally capable of producing erratic behavior and dependence. Holy shit! Look at the size of that thing. I'm Batman. Maybe there is a similarity between the social drinker and the pot smoker. Yet it's not quite the same. The daily drink may not be the best thing in the world, but a man who takes a drink after his day is done has worked. He has achieved. He has coped. And he wants to relax. Not so the teenage user. He deliberately seeks to tune out, cop out. No he pun intended, I bet. a mental crutch because he fears to stand on his own. He may never learn to cope with the inevitable everyday problems of living. He may well become one of the left-behind generation. Does smoking grass lead to crime? Not in Colorado. Quite easily, as can any driving need, when the one possessed by it is without the means to satisfy it. And legalizing the use of marijuana is not the answer. Again, I point to Colorado. Of the over 130 member nations of the World Health Organization, not one is for such a step. One nation did try it, with such dire results to its societal welfare within a few years, that the permissive stand was diametrically reversed, and today the death penalty is imposed for mere possession. 
That's one way to harsh a buzz. A less harsh, more realistic legal attitude than exists might be the answer. But in the end, smoking marijuana to blow your mind is like throwing sand in a delicate machine. And hey guys, I just knocked you all out. Hope you don't mind. Mac has had enough of the gloomy scene. He's itching to split. It's getting late. Tom. Dad, the film dropped back. acid again. Why is it always Indian music playing in these pot smoking scenes? Apparently, pot causes the film to develop green lines. Hey, it's a young Elliot Gould! Wake up and suck this brass dick! Okay. That siren is the bullshit police coming to take this film away. <laughs> I made a circle. If he's the only black guy at the pot party, does that make him the toking black guy? Hey, it's Charlie Sheen! My aunt had one of these and she never... Hey, now I know why she was happy all the time. It may be a first step. Tom's having sexual fantasies about the cop. And still nobody's figured out I'm 35. The left behind generation. Hey dude, where's the bathroom? Knew I made a wrong turn. Now I'll never find the bathroom. It can lead to crime. You look like you've got bread, man. Give. It's the world's friendliest mugger. They took my That's sweater, too! Marijuana. It's no worse than taking a drink. A 20-year study of marijuana smokers in Greece showed a fine personality change and permanent brain deterioration. There are still too many unanswered questions about the effects of smoking marijuana. Exhaustive tests are being made. And only the results wanted by the government are approved. Hi. You need a little grass. No, I'm the house. No thanks. He's just a kid. He's old enough to have a bus. He's old enough to blow pot. Same rule applies to drinking in Mexico. Tom's impressed with what he has experienced. Nobody of the establishment lectured him, just gave him straight facts. Because this wouldn't be an anti-marijuana film if they hadn't. One afternoon, Tom again has a talk with his father. 
He's looked at both the pros and cons of blowing pot. He's not convinced that grass is all that harmful, but there is room for a lot of doubt. Why don't we wait and see? There's a lot of testing to be done before we'll know all the facts. We've already got our hang-ups with smoking and drinking. We know the consequences we face doing it. Why add another hang-up by blowing pot? Because it's fun. Especially since the full consequences of that are not known. Tom has decided what he'll do. He wants to see how long it'll take for people to figure out he's 35. He's no psychological cripple, unable to cope. Who needs a grass crutch? Much better to keep off the grass. So don't smoke lawn clippings. Dear Bark Rednecks, we don't make bad movies, we make bad movies better.